Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Henry Winkler is not only one of the nicest people to grace this stage, it's true. Every person that comes here sees his picture on the wall and says he is the nicest man in the world. It's true. It's almost kind of weird when they do it. He's also one of the funniest people on screen. In Bill Hader's new series, Barry, you can see Winkler and, uh, as well as Sarah Goldberg as struggling actors who found themselves caught up in the life of a hitman. Let's take a look. Out. Damn spot. Out, I say. Why then, just time to do it. I thought this was Natalie's part. Yeah, I know. I also just want to talk about it. Do you mark that? Okay, Barry, hold it before you give yourself a hernia. What are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm saying my line. Yeah, and <laughs> you're saying the hell out of it, too. Except we're not sayers. We're starting to be actors, right? Where's Lady Macbeth? She's right there. She's so close. What is she doing? Shh. She's sleepwalking. Do you want to wake her? No. So my thought is your guy would probably talk like this. And not talk like this, for Christ's sake. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Congrats on the show. I love the show. It's one of my favorite things on television right now. If not my favorite thing to watch on television right now, it's... That is it's, a great compliment. It's so much fun. It's so delightful and, uh, and at the same time violent, so maybe delightful isn't the right word to use, but <laughs> I find the show to be a delight. <laughs> Do you know what is amazing? I still don't know. We've done a, uh, a, a full season. Mm -hmm. We're about to do the second season. We were picked up after the third episode on the air. They have a comedy in a, in a drama class, mm -hmm. and they have a shoot 'em up in the, with the assassins, and they are two separate shows. They could be their own show. How did these boys put that into 28 minutes? I am, I it's don't have the answer. It's extraordinary, like it shouldn't work, and yet somehow their brilliance, yeah. the two of them, they can do this kind of tight about Hader and Alec Berg. Hader and Alec Berg, Bill Hader and Alec Berg, yes. yeah, they are, they are just brilliant, and they walk this really kind of fine line tightrope dance between drama and comedy, and I mean, I remember when we all got together to watch the whole season together, and um, yeah, yeah, we did, and uh, Henry was not there, which was devastating, but we, um, so not everybody was so there. So I have the to main, wait the main event every Sunday until I can see, finally, <laughs> no. the last four shows. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that HBO will not give you the episodes. <laughs> yeah, they won't you send them to like, everyone. No. <laughs> yeah, they, so we watched and we were like gobsmacked looking at the other half of the show going, wait, you guys were doing what? You know, like they're in these kind of crazy we action sequences. We read the, the we whole show around a table together and we made friends with these people. And uh, then we, were, we went to lunch together. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we didn't see half the cast. <laughs> Nine months later, I saw right. Stephen Root yeah. again. That's right, yeah. Stephen Root is, bare, is I think... Fuchs. Well, he's Fuchs, yes. Yeah. That's his character. But he doesn't really show up at, at all around the acting classes. Maybe no. once does he show up? No. He's at the party that time. That's right. But that's mm -hmm. about it. That's yeah. right. Um, what was... I mean, this is the first time Bill Hader's gotten the chance to direct, right? And he's directed a number of episodes. What was it like working with him as a director? I mean, he was extraordinary. Like, this is what he's always wanted to do, you know? So it's a real treat for us to get to be with somebody kind of realizing their dream. Um, he wanted to be a writer-director, and, and here he is. And, and he's he, also a cinephile. Mm -hmm. uh, he well, knows... Like an encyclopedic he's, I, knowledge yes. of film. It's unbelievable. He can quote lines from every film ever made by a human being on the earth. <laughs> yeah, it's extraordinary. And so, um, you know, visually, he sort of could reference a lot of things. And But because he's an actor, he had a real sensitivity and understanding of what we're doing. So it, he was such a collaborative director. You know, there was no ego involved. And same with Alec, who also directed, too. It's like the two of them have this kind of best idea wins attitude it's true. and you come and you go oh you know i have this idea for a scene i don't know and they go you know well do you want to do you want to show us or do you want to surprise us you know yeah. and that kind of generosity of spirit like they created this really well, you can't make anything environment. you can't make anything good with ego getting in the way no that no, is absolutely true. true they are very precise writers they each directed two episodes a piece mm 
Uh, Hero, uh, who is a wonderful young director who uh, I think helped create the, the look of Atlanta, uh, did two episodes. And he was in my son's um, film class at USC. So I was there congratulating his parents on his student films, and now he's directing them. <laughs> yeah, the world and how it goes around. Yeah. Do, do, you, uh, do you have conversations with, uh, with, with Bill and Alec about how he's juxtaposing this guy who is an assassin and kind of learning how to feel with these actors who, in some ways, they're in no way as bad as him, but their narcissism kind of makes you question how good of people they actually are because, you know, their, their, their blind ambition and their hunger can really push them in any direction. As a viewer, I'm not really, like, I'm not really sure you where like your character president? falls, you know? But... <laughs> Like the president? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Because <laughs> we're wearing pink and it had to happen. I wouldn't necessarily say anybody is as bad, even even Barry in even this show, Barry. as the president. Okay, and I can answer that question uh, in one word. No. I never had that conversation with Bill. It never even came into my mind. I never asked that question. I think it is a great question. It's an interesting juxtaposition. It is. He's learning how to feel, and these people who are supposedly only caring about feelings yeah. are actually somewhat cut off from their feelings when it comes to understanding who he is and what people need in their in their actual lives. Yeah, yes. well, it's brilliant. I think they said something like, what is it they say? They say that the crime world is like, all stakes and no drama. And then the acting world is like no stakes, but all <laughs> drama. So I think, yeah, I think that they've done a really clever thing where you've got all these people who are sort of, you feel a little bit like maybe they would be better versions of themselves in a different set of circumstances. Yeah. But the way the world is sort of treating them, they're sort of bringing the worst out of them. And I think that oddly, yeah, the narcissism, especially yeah, Sally's, a little bit of a nightmare. I mean, her tunnel vision just kind of drowns everything else out. Um, the fact that she wants to be famous, yeah. not that she necessarily wants to yeah. do great no, work as is, an actor. That is, that is the, the conundrum yeah. uh, for people who want to be an actor. Uh, if you want to be famous, uh, you will probably fizzle. If you want to be good at what you do, you have a shot at being famous. Because fame must be lasting, not just in the moment. Yeah. Um, what is, I mean, your character is the, uh, you, the teacher of this acting class, and he himself has a bit of a, um, I would say, sadistic side a little bit. Would right. you agree? Well, what is interesting is that you, we saw him uh, uh, audition uh, in the fourth episode. And you see... He wants so bad to be somebody in the world. And in his class, he has them stand and applaud for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he has created the world in which he can be somebody, be but he can't live in the world and be somebody. Yeah, we were talking a lot about that, about like the status in the show. Like they put people in there in these roles where they get to be they get to be high status and sort of completely like he's a god in that room and everybody worships him. And then they flip it and show the characters at their most vulnerable. And you see this man, you know, late in his career, saying I'm self represented and you know, going up for a one line part. I mean, it's heartbreaking. And I think throughout it was a heartbreaking. It was truly, scene. truly heartbreaking. What was and amazing. Oh, thank you. But when I did it, you know, the audition, and, and uh, we were in another set, and I read it, um, the scene off camera with the actual woman, uh, uh, Sherry Thomas, who was the casting person for Barry. Oh, wow. And I, I did it, and I did the, uh, the audition scene, and... What was the line again? I'm sorry. Hey, we're waiting here. Yeah. <laughs> or, hey, we're waiting here. <laughs> I said I would do it two ways. I was the, what was it, the last man in line. That's what I auditioned for. And when I was done, I just looked away. And when I did, all the people sitting at Video Village, where the producers and the directors see the takes um, on, on screens, uh, way over somewhere. And all I heard was, oh. <laughs> what is your what is what is your take on 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 Sally? Like, where do you feel for her, and where do you also kind of get a little uh, feel that she may be a little icky? 
Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I think that they did a brilliant thing in that they wrote this character who is, you know, not very likable. Um, and I always said to Bill, like, you know, I don't think we have to like her. I just think we have to know her. And I feel like I know that girl, you know, and she's like in a bar somewhere in L.A. Like right now. No. <laughs> The line when she is at her front door with with uh, with Barry, and she says, um, "Do you want to come in?" And he goes, "No." And you're confused, and you don't understand. You just invited a man in. This beautiful woman invited a man into her bed, and he said no. And then she said, "Do you want to come in and discuss why you don't want to come in?" <laughs> and at that moment, the vulnerability, the when she is caught in the moment with her agent who says, you know, I want to sleep with you, and if I don't sleep with you, well, then I'm not going to represent you. I'm just joking. And she, and you, you that is when you, you love this woman, when you see, oh, my God, she's caught and doesn't know where to go yeah well they did i think they did a really clever thing i mean they showed somebody who's like seemingly sort of sweet as pie small town girl kind of guileless and um and then you see her this like kind of cutthroat ambition and it's a little bit of a dangerous combo i mean she's kind of a narcissistic nightmare but at the same time they do a very good job of showing her yeah in these really vulnerable yeah. situations and so the hope is that there's some empathy somewhere and i mean my experience has been very different to Sally's. I, I moved to England when I was 19, went to school there and came up in theater. I never moved to LA and this whole thing of wanting to be a star and the desperation that she says to him, you know, do you think I'm gonna be a star? And it's really, it's what, tragic like to me. Like, yeah, like she means a movie star and it's like sort of delusional and um, sort of misguided. And they wrote, it's, I really empathize with her. I really, I think they did a really good job of writing this woman and there's sort of a gentle arc in the season of Jean's character, or Henry's character, Jean, trying to get her to learn the lesson that she has to play with others. And that's like the the thing she's missing, you know? What, what did you, uh, do the acting classes cut a little close to home for you? Have you ever been in acting classes that are kind of like this? Oh, absolutely. They're a weird beast, I, <laughs> acting yeah. classes. But here's what I think, that Every acting teacher that has, every one of them has something to give. And they are a pool of water if you put all of those lessons together. And I'm the sponge. <laughs> and I soak up as much water as I can. I, I squeeze dry the, the sponge. And the moisture that is left <laughs> is what I keep to use. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good teacher, those lessons five years after I graduated from drama school and I was doing uh, um, my first television movie, I went, oh, that's what they meant. It keeps coming to you. And I think preparation is essential. Yeah. I don't think you can just go, uh, I did not want to be a flash in the pan. You mean you when you said that you didn't want to be a flash in the pan? Are you taught, is that like kind of specifically referencing after Happy Days sort of the feeling uh, of after that? Happy Days? But so many young actors come and they are stars, and then they think, "Oh my gosh, I'm such a big star, I should leave my show." Right. When not realizing this is how you are loved by the character on that show. And then a lot of times there is no life after that show yeah. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure with my will, my tenacity, and my preparation that I could find the hole in the dike and like Mercury, go through it <laughs> so that I could end up here in, in my chair next to Sarah. <laughs> So that at this point in your life, you're still getting cast in wonderful shows. That's right. I auditioned. Did you for, really audition? I did. I did. Uh, it's crazy to me. It seems like it was written for you. I understand, but it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, I auditioned first for Bill Hader, and I read with Sherry Thomas, and I realized out of the corner of my eye, I've made Bill Hader laugh. <laughs> I thought this was a good thing. Then you wait and you wait and you wait. Then you wait and you wait and you think, okay, my name has just been erased from the chalkboard. Oh, no. Then I got a call. Then I go back for my second time. And now I'm reading for Alec Berg. I've heard a lot about Alec Berg. Doesn't give a lot away. He's very strict. 
He's really? Norwegian. <laughs> and now, out of the corner of my eye, I see I've made him smile. <laughs> then you wait and you wait and you wait, and I'm waiting and I'm waiting, and now I think, okay, my name has come off the chalkboard a second time. And then they called and said, would you like to be in the show? I just can't believe that they had you had you audition. If you, I mean, it's shocking. Yeah. I met Henry at my audition, so it was like my first day ever auditioning in Los Angeles, and I was well, really, really. Ner I mean, sorry. Yeah, that sounded really smug. That's you after ten that years of slumming in yeah. theater. Okay. You keep that to yourself. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, ten years of a very a lot of no's. Anyway, so I, I go out and I'm um, I'm sitting in this hallway because there was all these nervous girls and I didn't want to feel more nervous so I tuck myself away and I'm sitting on the stairwell you know looking at my lines and this man like comes down and I just he does a 180 and he sticks his hand out and goes hi I'm Henry and in my mind I'm like hi I'm hallucinating I mean like is this what happens in LA is the fawns just like at your audition <laughs> is he just like very magically appears like a genie in a bottle or something and then it was there for good luck I don't it know like... it was so surreal remember when you get in there <laughs> yeah. Hey, and then he just yeah, disappears. But that's literally what <laughs> happened. Because then he said, "Are you about to go in and read?" And I said, "Yeah, I am, Henry." And then, uh, and then he said, "Well, break a leg." And I was like, "Thank you very much, Henry. That's that's very nice. How did yours go?" And he said, "You know, if I had an answer to that question, I'll tell you this much: I had fun." And he just like walks out, and he just like needed a chapeau. It was so elegant. And then I look down, back down at my lines, and I look back up, and there's this huge window. And then I see him for the next 15 minutes, back and forth in the parking lot, looking for his car. And I. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is LA. This is the whole LA experience. You got the whole thing, yeah. You get the fawns, you get the parking lot search. Yeah, it was uh, it was a real entrance. <laughs> I mean, the fawns is a good one. I mean, that you it, it would the other LA experience is you know a reality TV star or someone that's like, I was auditioning too. I, you're <laughs> like, oh, weren't you on Naked and Afraid or something? This is weird. Um, Henry, you know you have a reputation. Uh, I mentioned it at the beginning of this. Every time, not every time, all the time when people come here, we have your picture hanging up over there. Everybody comes in and they point to that picture and they go, that is the nicest man in this industry. I never think about Anyone being... say that to your face? <laughs> you know, people say that, but I, I don't take it seriously because I don't think about being a nice person. I think that I am thrilled that I'm alive. I'm thrilled to be on this earth. I am thrilled that I'm still living my dream and that we are together in this show. That is not hyperbole because if you haven't seen it and you watch it, you will know that everything we are saying here is the truth. I am just a very grateful human being. Uh, and, and if that translates to being a nice fellow, then okay. I'm sorry, but I have to embarrass him just nice. a little. Um, he, he is the nicest human. We think of him as like mayor of the universe, maybe the galaxy. And he, um, he comes on Fridays with like cakes. I mean, it's too much. But one thing I learned, it's like the loveliest, it's like a mensch off at work between him and Bill and Alec. It's like, come on, everybody tone it down a notch. It's so lovely. Someone be and negative he, here. Someone, someone be me. Someone, no, they're just so, I realized with Henry when we first started on this job, that he comes to work every single day with the glow in his face and the light in his eyes of somebody on their very first job and their very first day and that enthusiasm. And it's extraordinary. I don't know anybody who has that sort of grace with what we do. And that sort of set a real tone. I mean, you know, he's the most experienced of the group and he, everybody looked up to him. And if that's, if he's setting that tone, I mean, you really have to raise your game and try and meet him there in some way. I mean, there was wow. no room for, there was no room for that negativity because we had the Winkler. Well, on that note, let, personal growth question, Henry. <laughs> I, I feel like I have uh, negativity issues. How do you make, <laughs> how do you, how do you make, no, how do you maintain your positivity? Everybody has negative energy in okay, them, but I, how do I you have, show up every I day? I have negative issues too. My, my, oh, help. one of the things, <laughs> one of the things that I suggest to young actors is to get an extra pillow. So you sleep on one and beat the shit out of your bed <laughs> with the other one and you drain yourself. But if you look at your negative, if you look at your negative. He's the nicest guy in the industry. Cut to him just punching yeah. a pillow. Yeah. Just a yeah. funeral just of pillows. pillows. I get angry. 
cemetery. I get angry. Yeah. Hey, stop that. <laughs> see, was that scary or was that scary? No, that's why you can see how good he is as Cousineau because that kind of channeling, that sort of, that's not, you know, that's a real stretch from his personality and... I mean, this is what my life is like now. Every day I get to go to work with this guy. You know, it's so the loveliest, loveliest experience. And Thank you. it's nice because there's Ditto. a few newbies on the show and it's good. I mean, it's good to have mentors and people who are experienced and, and teach you how to behave, you know, and it's grace all the way from this man. So. How do you maintain, though, that positivity? <laughs> but no, not, actually, my question is, if you go to, like, she said that you go to work every day excited and thrilled like it's your first day, and you've been doing this now for, what, 40, 40, 40 43, 40 years? 43 years. 43 years. How do you, is that something that you're aware of that you're maintaining, no. or is that just something that is I you? just love my job. And I dreamt about my job since I was seven. And I am now 72. And look, I'm doing my job, and I'm doing it on this unbelievably well-written, well-directed show with this incredible ensemble. It, I, I, I just pinch myself a lot, yeah. do you know? When, when it is negative, uh, as, a, as an actor on a set, when, when, it, when it gets negative, um, you just say, uh, uh, you know, one out of ten directors will be able to direct you. And so you just say, hey, thank you. That's great. I, I, w I wish I had thought of that. Do what you know is right, <laughs> and they will say to you, <laughs> didn't I tell you? Do you know what I mean? You yeah. take charge of your life. And I, I think that will uh, calm you right down. That will make your life so much better. Is that true that one out of 10 directors know, so know how to direct you? It is so true. It is shocking. Uh, the same thing with, uh, with actors. You, we've worked with actors. And you must pretend they are giving you what you need. And you be, preparation, there's the preparation again. All the, the classes that, uh, that Sarah took uh, in, in England or here. or uh, You are then prepared when you come up against junk, you can make that junk into art. It's your responsibility. I, I wrote down, first thing I wrote down, I, am I talking too much? No, oh, this is great. First thing I wrote down in my journal at, uh, at drama school at Yale. The theater is my temple, and it is my responsibility to keep it clean. Mm. So if you take that now to its logical extension, that goes to everything. It is my responsibility to keep it clean. That's great. Yeah. Let's get some questions from, oh, there we go. Aw, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's get some questions from the audience. Who's a question? Hi. Hi. For one, I'm a huge fan of the show. I think Thank it's you. so great. You guys Thank do you. phenomenal. Um, I'm also an actor. And, and um, <laughs> I was wondering what it's like acting as an actor on the show and like the meta theatricality of that. Yeah, it is pretty meta. Uh, uh, it's really fun. I mean, you get to exercise a lot of demons at the same time as slightly making fun of what we do without sending it up. I think they walk a really fine line there. And um, I mean, you get the joy of playing like roles within roles. You know, it's it's really, it's it's thrilling. You know what I. Uh, I think that you, there, there's a, a great story. Uh, an American uh, actor uh, gets a short order cook job uh, on a set, and he goes and he researches, uh, and he goes and he uh, makes hamburgers, or she makes hamburgers at home, and flips them, and really prepares, and then goes to work and makes those hamburgers. An English actor gets up in the morning and goes to work and makes hamburgers. So as an actress, Whoever it is, you play the person on that page the way you would approach any person on that page, it seems to me. Next question. What is your name? Oh, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hi. I want to remember when I see you on the screen. <laughs> I, yeah. Henry, come on. You got I mean, to be this. Israel. Is this is like 24 hours a day. All right, Hannah, get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's 
That's right. That's that what better? we're talking about. All right. I hate you. <laughs> whoa, Henry, whoa. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm... The day Henry Winkler cracks. <laughs> On build. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Hey, guys. Um, absolutely love the show. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I was just wondering, uh, did you guys have to do any improv at all uh, when you guys were uh, doing the show? Well, you know, I actually, so when I was auditioning back when I met the lovely Henry Winkler, um, I had a call from Bill and he wanted to walk me through um, an improv audition we were going to do. Um, and I remember him calling and saying, how would you feel about coming in and improvising with me? And I thought, not good, you know, not good, um, but obviously I'll do it. And we had an hour long improv session as part of the audition process. But I think that was more sort of about workshopping the character a little bit and seeing if we got along well to work together and all of that. Because once we got going, the show is pretty tightly scripted. That said, um, they were very open and collaborative, like we said. So there were opportunities, like if you had an idea or something that you wanted to throw in, you, there was always room to try it that way. And, um, and a couple things, like the interrogation scene, for example, um, where the class is being interrogated by Moss, they just got everyone in the hot seat and let the camera roll. So everybody was just you know, making up their whole backstories. And so there, was, there were moments when we got to have that experience, but it's, it's pretty tightly scripted. On the very first day we all met as a complete cast, uh, Bill went off with the assassin group. And then he said to me, why don't you hold a class with your, with your, um, with your actors? Mm. And so we did an afternoon of improv. I just did um, what I remembered and, and uh, conducted uh, a faux class with them. Conducted as, as, as the character? No, uh, as Henry, and um, I didn't go uh, to the to the nth degree of Cousineau. Right. Cousineau, meanwhile, comes from the name comes from uh, Bill Hader's uh, baby doctor, his wife's baby doctor, OBGYN, <laughs> uh, who delivered the the three girls. Cousineau, yeah, Doctor Cousineau. Uh, one more. This question is for Henry, and there's also a small request at the end of it. Out of all the, uh -oh. ro out of all the, the role, it's pretty easy. Out of all the roles that you've done, including being a children's book author, which is your favorite? And the request is from a student of mine. If you could say something in the Fonz's voice, I promised her I would ask. Sure. Uh, one, I don't believe that it's for a student, but go ahead. <laughs> there's that negativity. Yeah. No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, outside of our family, outside of our grandchildren, uh, and our new puppy, Sadie, who is now 13 weeks old. Uh, my, my most proud moment are the books that I have written with my partner, Lynn, Lynn Oliver, because I, I never thought I would ever be an author. I never thought I could write a book. And now there are 34. So that's number one. And number two, what is your student's name? <laughs> Don't laugh, just give me the name. Rebecca, hey, Rebecca. You're my kind of girl, let me tell you something. What grade is she in? She's uh, just graduated, she's going to medical school in the She's fall. going to medical school. I got a pain right here. You know, I watched the Gary Shandling doc this weekend, and there's a great moment from you. Have you seen the doc yet? Yes, I have. There's that great moment from you with uh, Jeffrey Tambor yes. and Norm MacDonald on right. the set of uh, the Larry Sanders show. One of the first things I ever produced uh, was MacGyver, and along with MacGyver, we did Mr. Sunshine, a blind English professor. Uh, that was a half an hour comedy, and Terry, uh, um, uh, Jeff Tambor was the professor. Oh, wow. Yeah, it only lasted 13. MacGyver's still on. <laughs> uh, guys, congratulations on the show. I love it. It's on uh, Sunday nights on HBO 1030. 1030. Yeah. Yes. And how many episodes are left of the season right now? Uh, three. Three. Three, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Six, seven, and eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait to watch them. Everybody give them a round of applause. Let's Thank hear it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.